Did you know that the insurance company you choose is more important to your long-term costs than the Medicare supplement plan you choose? Look at this link. Here is a list of Medicare supplement plan G prices for a 75-year-old. They range from just over $128 a month to $138 per month. Now look at this. The very popular Medicare supplement plan N is supposed to be a lower premium than plan G and many plan N's are, but these plan N prices using the same age and zip code are higher than the plan G prices that I just showed you. These plan N Medicare supplement policies range from $169 per month and go all the way up to $209 per month. What I'm illustrating here is that a plan N with the wrong insurance company can cost more over time than a plan G with the right insurance company. A plan G with the wrong insurance company will cost much more than the prices that I've just illustrated. The point being that no matter which Medicare supplement plan you choose, your choice of insurance companies has the greatest impact on your price over time. How do you avoid getting stuck in this trap of paying too much for your Medicare supplement? I'm going to show you. The two hidden risk videos, this one and part two that I'm producing here in late 2023, are intended to help you avoid this trap of paying too much for your Medicare supplement, any Medicare supplement. Of course, this is all part of the analysis that I put into our process of selecting insurance companies to recommend. And much of this you can do yourself, but I'm mostly sharing this information so that those who choose to work with us understand our process and have a greater confidence in our recommendations. We don't just pick a low price plan and you shouldn't either. Buying the cheapest supplement plan when you're new to Medicare is a great way to end up in a price trap over the long run. And I'll show you how in this video coming up. If we haven't met yet, I'm Matthew Clausen, CEO of MedigapSeminars.org. We're one of the premier independent insurance brokerages in the country specializing in Medicare and our services are free to you, the consumer. Our goal is to help you make an informed decision regarding your Medicare. In just a moment, you'll learn a few easy ways to avoid traps when selecting an insurance company to manage your Medicare supplement. In the Hidden Risk Part 2 video coming soon, I will add to the information in this video and update the first Hidden Risk video recorded more than four years ago. You'll see some of the predictions I made in that video that have come to fruition. In addition, in part two, I'll provide you with a checklist that you can use so you can determine which companies to avoid. So please subscribe and click the notification button so that you get the information as soon as it's released. Let's begin with an important concept to start this selection process. Finding the right insurance company is not about finding the perfect insurance company. There's no such thing. It's not about finding a company that will never raise prices. That doesn't exist either. It's about setting rules, setting a minimum standard by which you filter out the companies most likely to have these hidden risks that I'll be discussing. And this will all come together when you combine the information in this video and in the second video with the checklist that I'm going to provide you in the Hidden Risk Part 2 video, which should be about, you know, about a week from now, about a week from the time that, that this is produced. After you've filtered out the poor choices, you'll want to have a process for managing the other risks. And that is those risks that can't be avoided. And we're going to talk about that in detail as well. Make sense so far? All right. All the Medicare supplement insurance companies are fighting a battle of trying to offer their products at a low enough rate to attract new buyers while attempting to avoid slim profit margins that typically result in outrageous price increases later on that end up losing customers. In order to keep their prices low to new buyers, new buyers, they will do one of a few things. The first and most common tactic is in-force only price increases. Now, what the heck is an in-force only price increase? Let's take a look. 
What we're looking at here are supplement Plan G prices for a 67-year-old in Ohio. Some insurance companies want this lowest price position of all the plans available. They want to be the lowest priced options for ages 65 to 67, 68 years old when most people purchase their first supplement plan. And note how close in price these plans are. So the lowest plan, the lowest price plan, it's not necessarily a good thing, but I'm going to talk more about that right after this point. So let's say that this lowest priced company needs to increase prices because their costs have risen and they need to make a profit. If they raise prices across the board, then they would no longer be the lowest price policy, would they? They may not even stay in the top five or 10 lowest price choices, right? If they weren't the lowest price policy, they're concerned that it will negatively impact their ability to attract new customers. And this is especially true with a relatively unknown insurance company or one who is new to the market. That's an important point because people are more likely to feel comfortable with a big name like Humana or Mutual of Omaha than with Royal Arcanum Insurance. So for the unknown company, price may be the only thing it has going for it to attract customers. Make sense? It's the same with all or many of these in the lowest price section. So if instead of raising prices across the board, they only raised prices for people who already have a policy, meaning they're existing in-force policy holders, everyone will get a price increase, but this new customer price remains the same. It's still the cheapest plan. But something else happens here that is very important, and it's the risk of making a decision based off some misleading information. I know of several relatively large insurance agencies that tell their potential customers that if you check the price for age 80 to 85, you can see what you'll pay when you're that age. Or suggest that the policy that would be the lowest price when you're that age is the one with today's lowest price at that age. No. Just no. The price that shows as a quote for a new purchaser today has nothing to do with the price your policy might be when you're older. They're not related. They're not even correlated. Why? Because of in-force price increases that keep this new policy purchase price subdued. I hope this is making sense. It can be complicated. Here's a quick example. Let's take two identical companies. Both have the age 65 to 67 price exactly the same and age 85 exactly the same. Let's say, for example, $100 at age 65 and $200 at age 85. Then they both have a 5% annual price increase over the next five years. One increases rates across the board, the other enforce price increases only. What would that look like? After five years, the company that increased rates across the board now has an age 65 price of just over $127 and an age 85 price of just over $255. But the company with enforce only price increases has not changed their new policy prices. The 85-year-old who purchased a policy five years ago is paying $255.26. If they wanted to lower their price to the new policyholder price back down to $200, they would be required to requalify via medical underwriting. So you tell me, all this considered is using the quote engine price for a new policy an accurate predictor of the price you can expect to pay in the future. No. Using a current quote engine to suggest what your policy price might be when you're older is ignorant and certainly inaccurate. It can result in the consumer making a bad decision and a very expensive mistake. So that covers hidden risk number one, enforce only price increases and misinformation. 
Keep in mind, all insurance companies have enforced price increases at least occasionally. All do, some more often than others. Now, as I was putting together this video, I came across the little trick companies play, but I'm going to wait until the end of this video to show that to you, it's because I'm mean like that. Plus, it might make some of you feel like you've been played. For now, let's look at hidden risk number two. And this is the risk you take when you buy the cheapest Medigap plan. You may recall I mentioned earlier that buying the cheapest supplement plan when you're new to Medicare is a great way to end up in the price trap over the long run. Here's why. When we examine people starting Medicare, the ages of 65 to 67, during their initial enrollment into Medicare Part B, we can divide them into two very broad categories. Those who turn 65 with little to no significant health issues, and those who turn 65 and have already been struggling with health issues. Those who have been struggling with health issues, even before enrolling in Medicare, typically know their health isn't going to get better as they age. Many are concerned that they'll need to see a lot of doctors over the remainder of their lifetime. The number of times per year they need to see a doctor will only increase. And this is a fear that is not always rational. Still, for this reason, they tend to shy away from Medicare Supplement Plan N. Plan N has those office visit copays that can add up. When they're already seeing a doctor and a specialist or two, their view is the Plan N is not a good value because of the unknown quality of copays that they may end up paying. So this less healthy group tends to prefer the Medicare Supplement Plan G. They want the peace of mind of no medical bills, no copays. However, at the same time, for many in this category, their health challenges had a negative impact on their economic status. They're very budget conscious, so what do they do? They gravitate towards the cheapest Plan G they can buy. Now, if we go back to our previous example of the company wanting to be in the lowest priced Plan G, that's the one. Often, not always, but often these are small, no-name, or relatively unknown insurance companies. And that's an important point to remember. So, what's the result? The cheap Plan G in the 65 to 67 age bracket can attract a larger percentage of less healthy people during their initial enrollment when the insurance company is not allowed to ask health questions. And we're talking about people in their Medicare supplement initial enrollment period where there are no health questions asked. Obviously, a plan that has a larger percentage of people who need more medical care is going to have a higher loss ratio. And that means a higher percentage of the monthly premium goes to paying other people's medical bills. To keep up with the higher medical expenses, the insurance company must more aggressively raise their prices. As price increases continue, some of the healthy people in the plan that can pass medical underwriting will move to other plans, meaning an even greater percentage of people left in that plan are unhealthy and have higher expenses. And this is how today's cheap plan becomes tomorrow's expensive plan. To be clear, I'm not talking about the guarantee issue feature of Plan G. After my discussions with top management at several major insurance companies, they've made it clear that the guarantee issue feature only accounts for about 3% of all Medicare supplement Plan G policies. That's not enough to have a meaningful impact on price. So I don't want any confusion about that. Now you may have noticed something I said a moment ago is also the reason that Medicare Supplement Plan N has, on average, lower price increases than Plan J. It's the simple fact that during their initial enrollment period, people who have already had a history of health problems tend to shy away from Plan N. As a result, the initial enrollment pool of Plan N policyholders is, on average, healthier than the Plan G policyholders. And this leads to a lower usage of their Medicare and lower cost to the insurance company, which means lower price increases for you. 
And the same can be said about the high deductible plan and the unique innovative plan G that I alluded to in my recent video on high deductible plans. Those two are avoided by people who are on average less healthy. Now I mentioned earlier I wanted to show you an interesting trick that some insurance companies pull. Hi, I just wanted to take a moment to be sure you're aware of something that you may find helpful. If you're just researching Medicare and trying to figure out which plan is right for you, you may find my free Medicare mini course helpful. This is a four part course of short videos to help you understand Medicare so that you can make an informed decision. Just head on over to medigapseminars.org or click the link above my left shoulder. And look for the talking head in the lower right of the screen. When you click on it and choose the free Medicare mini course, You'll be glad you did. Oh, and if you like this video so far, please help me out by pressing the like button and feel free to leave a comment or a question. So let's get back to the video. So, have you ever been on the phone with an insurance broker or agent discussing a supplement plan and ask what's been the average annual price increase for that company? That agent is probably looking at the something like this in the quote engine. And what you're looking at, just to orient you, is the automatic attained age price increases on the left column and the unplanned announced price increases in the center. So most agents will answer your question saying a 2.6% average annual price increase since 2020 on average and a 2.7% annual attained age price increase. Add that together and you can expect 5.3%. Now, there are two things wrong with that answer. Have you noticed? Look at the increase history. There are three entries for 2020, two of which are 0%, and there are two entries for 2021, both 0%. The average annual price increase is the total price increases divided by the number of years in question. There are three years indicated, but the extra entries means the total is divided by seven, not three. The real price increase history is 6% plus the 2.7% annual attained age increase, which equals 8.7%. And that's a big difference. And at that rate, your price will double in eight years. So this message is to both Agents who I know watch this and individuals, be careful. I know many agents across the country just read the end result without looking closely at the data. You can do better. As an aside, with United Healthcare in states that don't mandate that all prices are uh, community rated or issue age, you must add in the 3% annual increase, which they refer to as a reversal of a discount and that will not display on the quote engine. So now two important points about this neat little trick. First point, I don't know for sure why this extra 0% rose occurs consistently with certain companies and never with others. I suspect that the quote engines may be recording self-reported data and some companies announce a 0% price increase. Second, and the most important point on price in this entire video. A lot has changed in our economy and with medical inflation since 2020 that make historical data somewhat irrelevant. Certainly it's not a direct predictor of future results. Because of higher inflation in addition to a surge in health issues, I'm seeing much higher annual price increases now than what we experienced from 2010 to 2020. And I mentioned the term loss ratio earlier. The loss ratio is the percentage of every dollar in insurance premiums that goes directly to paying other people's medical bills. A high loss ratio is bad. It can force price increases. And it means very low profit margins. Now, according to surveys done by Gen Re, they've stated that in 2017, the average loss ratio on a new Medicare supplement business was 79%. 79 cents of every dollar in premium went directly to medical bills. 
Now today it's at 87% and that's after high price increases in the last couple of years. It's a different environment than it was pre-pandemic and pre-inflation. The point being price increases are now the new norm and we're all going to need to plan accordingly. Okay, I saved the best info for last and that will be in my Hidden Risk Part 2 video coming up very soon. So now it's your turn. I make these videos for you to help you make an informed decision. Please write a quick comment below on if you believe that the information in this video will help you be a more informed consumer. I want to know is this will impact what topics that I decide to cover in future videos. So I hope you found this information helpful. Please like this video, press the thumbs up, share it, and let me know if you found the information useful. And if you want to see more, subscribe to my channel so you can see all my Medicare videos. I'm Matthew Clausen with MedigapSeminars.org. Thank you for watching.